today. I have chosen a partner in crime. <laughs> Not really. We're going to do all things allowed by law, I just told you. So Richard and I will be all things allowed by law, a table deal. I put it on the end of this little part of this show. And this will be our record of starting our science fiction writers meetup group with uh, Ken Johnston, which I told him a couple of months in April. And uh, we hadn't done a thing on it to meet up yet. Of course, they just opened up No Mask in June in Vegas. But uh, Ken is in October 8th is his birthday. And we're I guess we're going to try to work out something with him. Because he wants to talk all his intrigue in next book. And I promised him I'd help him with a book after me. and uh, He met with William Tompkins and Emory Smith and David Wilcox. He those UFO events in person and do speaking engagements with Richard. Now, I was on the radio with Laura Eisenhower, who was making women mystique and uh, new age stuff, but because of her name, her I think it was her grandfather was uh, Eisenhower, so she's making Dwight Eisenhower. You're breaking up a little bit for some reason. I don't know. Oh well, okay. I think I do know. I'm uh, between eight military bases, uh, but I'm next to people when they fly over jets. I can hear one going over. Right. Yep. It makes a roar. You may not can hear the roar, but I can. So if I break up, I can't help it. There, somebody told me there's something on those jets that it will knock off something to do in the air from the tower to my cell phone. Does that make sense, Richard? You can look into yeah, it. Yeah, it, okay. it may scramble signals Oh. deliberately. Well, yeah, because it may not be the mil- – it's probably the military ones, right, because right. it may not be uh, like TWA if that's – I don't think that's even around anymore. American Airlines. I don't even know all those airlines I used to fly. Delta. Southwest Delta. <laughs> yeah, I flew Delta for sure. I used to have all those cards and uh, miles I lost, especially all those miles I lost. Flying to Hawaii is Teresa J. Thurmond. I was T.J. Thurmond or in and out of country and uh, on my passport. But I don't even have those passports. Can't hear you. Yeah. You can't hear me? I lost you for a couple minutes. That is so strange. Well, it's gone now. Yeah, let's see if you can keep me. I apologize. Uh, plus, you're, is it stopped raining in Georgia? Well, for the moment, anyway. Okay. Well, it's sunny and beautiful here in uh, Gulf Breeze, but I am got, I don't know of any other radio stations in Gulf Breeze, but we are at Mecca. Excuse me, it's Mecca home for UFOs. And with Dr. Bruce McAbee, that helped me start the ACO, Alien Contact Organization. It's open source, free to uh, anyone that wants to be known. But, Richard, uh, I got tired of paying all the bills and not getting any help. So I sort of gave up on trying to keep up with everybody. So that's one thing that social media is going to have to be good for. So all those people that were following me on social media, if y'all want to listen to Richard and I are being our lives, you know, we may drop our accents from time to time <laughs> and sound like we're from England or Australia or Ireland. But um, we may trick you once in a while, but we're going to do our best to entertain you, and uh, we'll have a really good time, okay? <laughs> Richard, let me entertain you. So, Richard, if I send you a book with I Start, 50 years, May 10th, 1967 to May 10th, 2017, that makes 50 years, okay? That's a lot of living. People probably don't care because it's behind them. We know the kids won't. However, there may be some good entry gum show, shoe, or what they used to like in intelligence was people – that they've sent into the field. 
right? But they wouldn't claim us be not. Like uh, it's a lot like the born supremacy on a few of my cases because they had just kicked me out, shut the door, and act like they didn't know me. And trust me, that's exactly what they did, and it made me feel like crap because I was on my own. But I was going after some of the biggest cases and the biggest corporations in the world, and nobody knew who I was, including the people that were hiring me. (laughs) But it was either government or rich attorney. So I'll leave it at that. But there's some good information out there. But, Richard, I guess the first one we ought to start with is something similar to debris. So what are we going to call that kind of book? It's not really military intrigue, and it's not really science fiction because we're going to base it on the truth. It's uh, Is there a name? It, it's uh, We don't have to worry about it because we're going to discuss it here on the radio to keep people interested. But like you said, whoever wrote that debris and did the screenplay and the script, they left more questions, and I like that. It's exactly – when you said it today, Richard, that's what I liked about it. Well, X-Files, X-Files was exactly the same way. X-Files, well, each episode yeah. always left you a cliffhanger. You always had to try and figure out, well, who was doing what to who, or was there something that actually happened, or was it – all imagination or exactly what. Yeah, so that's the kind of books I want to write and the stories I want to tell on the radio and have a weekly radio show that people in the hospital or my truck drivers that listen to me. I want to be like the daytime Art Bell because I can only get you from 5 to 7 right now because of your intense work that you're doing, and uh, so 5 to 7 on Thursday's live two-hour show. So uh, my daughter just walked in, Angela Parrish, and uh, she's helping me with my ACO association with Stephanie, and uh, we'll keep up with you. But, Richard, how are we going to do this so we can let members, if they want to be in our uh, meetup, on? uh, do we want to do it on Skype because you've only – uh, this is at the end of this write-up for today's show and our anniversary. Angela, it's nine years today is my anniversary for being on this show. Yeah, and uh, iHeart's bought Spreaker, Box Nest, and Blog Talk Radio. iHeart, and I've been with them for years. So, Well, Richard, I don't know how we're going to make this happen, but as of today, folks, if you want to join us, we've got ACO Press Club. For our journalists, now, only requirement is I ask you to also join the Society of Professional Journalists, and as I talked to them years ago, I can't make you, but it's the oldest, and we have some ethics that we like to follow in the Society of Pro- uh, Professional Journalists, and if you're a certain age, you can sign on like I did. I'm a senior uh, professional, and I've been with them since 78, ACIR. And they know that. And I talked to one of the women that was like the president of the company. And they get together in New Orleans every year, September, October. Well, it's usually New Orleans, Richard. I'd like to come get you and uh, or have you meet me here because you can drive over here and then we could go on to New Orleans. But represent us and our new company for everybody that wants to join us. So that's June, July, August, four, three, maybe by September, New Orleans. Uh, but it's spj.org, everybody uh, that wants to join us. SPJ, three initials. I don't know how they got that in cyberspace culture. That's a short domain back during the dot com days. SPJ.org. Now, we are ACO Association, but we have call signs for ACO and ACIR. And I've had TJ Mars ET Radio is long, but TJ Mars ET, TJ Mars ET Radio with Blog Talk because in Canada, Dirk Vanderplug, who has passed over, my producer, he is no longer on the planet. And then my producer with Ron Howard and Brian Grazer and uh, entertainment out there in Hollywood when I was in their office with their attorneys, that was, I had an office in California for five years. See, Richard doesn't recall this probably but i uh, had a real office and my daughter angela angela come here and say hi in a minute because yeah this is where we talk about you being a movie 
She said, no. <laughs> I said, no. My daughter, uh, Angela, I put her in a movie called, um, what was she in? Let's see. I'm trying to think. God, I've been on so many movie sets. Oh, I remember. It uh, It wasn't by choice. I know a lot of y'all thinking because I'm a psychic, and I was uh, Michael Jackson's psychic, one of many, but I really liked him. But it was Witchcraft 3, and uh, if they, all you people that follow uh, uh, movies, uh, they have their own following, believe it or not. And uh, Angela was in the Witchcraft 3 as the model that she is. She's still tall and beautiful. Would you say hi to everybody? Say hi to Richard. It's just one time on the anniversary. Please? <laughs> she doesn't want to. <laughs> That's why she is not anymore in movies. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Angela. I love you. She came and fed my kitty cats for me. All right. Well, that's okay, folks. This is live, and she is a movie star, my daughter, Angela Parrish, all you people that keep up with credits. And my name is on there as Jungle Beach because we supplied some of the – they carried the uh, camera equipment. My other daughter that is now past, Ginger Parrish, is uh, no longer on the planet. She was in Witchcraft 3. Pick it up. I would say it's your blockbuster because I was with – all those uh, people that not only were the producers and in and out of Hollywood and in and out of producers uh, and uh, being a psychic and meeting people and on the red carpet, and I proposed that to the uh, my publicist. I know this sounds funny being an investigator, but I was still an investigator, but they just didn't know it. But I was also a psychic, and I was also in the U.S. Navy, and I was also running a corporation, and I was also going to people synergistically involved. And I had been with Bob Hope back in 1967, I think, again, or 66, at Fort Polk. And then I was on stage with Bob Hope in Dallas. And, um, gosh, I was with Bing Crosby. I was with Anita Bryant. Um Frank Sinatra, Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby was funny, and I liked his wife, but I would sit with his wife a lot. Bing Crosby, to me, his head looked bigger than his body. <laughs> if you ever notice on, I don't All know right how I now. did that on movies, but, but I, I, don't, I guess he's passed now. But I met a lot of famous people that people uh, today don't even know who I'm talking about, probably listening. But uh, getting to meet famous <laughs> Gone way far distance. There you go. Yeah, and it kicked my – yeah, something uh, – all of a sudden the signal gets linked and my screen went dark. But I met a lot of movie stars, which would make for interesting, really, if I told my truth. But I don't know that I'll ever do that. Maybe if I get really old and I remember if I haven't got Alzheimer's. They say I don't. Well, you can, you can talk about this in roundabout ways. So I think we'll call this the Kaleidoscope Project. Oh, interesting. Because a kaleidoscope, you know, it's a vision that shows you a particular event or a particular situation very up close, but yet at the same time, because it's a kaleidoscope, there are all kinds of different views. Well, yeah, and now things have changed in Hollywood and all the big, great people. uh, Shoot, now... There's only a conglomerate of, it used to be, you know, maybe three to five. And uh, now we've got the National Archives showing us old stuff that we're, uh, I'm known with the Smithsonian and Archivist with Ace Folklife. And then up in Kentucky, when I was doing IBMA and BMI, Broadcast Music Incorporated, singer songwriter, but that's the last they remember me being out in 2004 or five with the Country Music Association. And meeting with the president or the woman of Broadcast Music Incorporated, and she had me with Viacom, and I don't know if I was writing or what all I was doing, but uh, she put with uh, BMI Viacom, and then I let BMI know, uh, you know, I was writing songs, and I paid about 85 k at one time to all these great people through the years that when I got hurt, and uh, to the total of getting my back broke and neck broke, and then uh, I was disabled. So I had to learn to walk and talk, and that's why I started singing again and how I got involved in CMA and IBMA. But, you know, 
you're uh, you got to learn to get back.